Merry Christmas Eve, and may the Lord be with you. Uh, may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit rest in you and remain with you, not only on Christmas, but throughout the whole year. Let us pray. God of all ages, in the birth of your Son, Jesus, your boundless love for creation shattered the powers of darkness forever. Be born in us today with that same love and light that our song may blend with all the choirs of heaven and give glory to your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. He is your son and our Lord forever and ever. And we can all say amen. Now please enjoy our beautiful prelude music performed by Susan Brown, our music director.
I'd like to welcome everyone to our Christmas Eve celebration, our, our celebration of the birth of the Messiah. I was hoping we would be all together in one place for this celebration, but we're not, and that's okay. God is sovereign over all of this, and we are keeping each other safe, and that's a very important thing. But, but one of the things to remember about Christmas is Christmas isn't about trees and toys and and elves. It's not even about shopping and gifts. It's about the birth of the Messiah. It's about God's gift to us those many years ago in a dark and lonely stable where a young couple gave birth to a son who would transform the world because that son of theirs was also the son of God. And because of that gift to us, we are changed forever. And that transformation that we often forget, that, that power of the spirit that dwells within us, although we often ignore it, is the power that creates the Christmas miracles that every now and then we glimpse. And when we glimpse them, we feel hope. So my prayer for each one of us this Christmas is that we are alert, listening, and watching for the miracles of God that come to us not only on Christmas, but every day of every year of our lives. So welcome. Thank you for being here. And please enjoy our service and our celebration. I think you'll find it beautiful. I sure do. Our prayer for illumination. Creator God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, open our minds and our hearts as we hear the story of the birth of the Messiah. He is the one who came and who is to come. One God with you in the unity of the Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The people of Israel waited through the darkness of betrayal and exile for the salvation promised by Adonai. Israel's kings lost their way in the politics of the time and in worldly pursuits. They became corrupt and self-serving, forgetting to place their trust in the Lord alone and forgetting that the Lord their God loved justice and cared about the poor and weak. Those who were rich and comfortable forgot the poor and marginalized. God's punishment was defeat and exile. Overcome by their enemies and taken in exile to Babylon, Israel waited for redemption, for a king worth serving, one who would lead them with love and care like a shepherd. Israel waited for the Messiah promised by the prophets, 
and for the comfort he would bring. This scripture reading will be read from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God. Oh, 
Hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, at a time of great danger to Israel, the Lord promised his people a savior who would sit forever on the throne of David, his father. This anointed king of the Jews, Messiah, would usher in a time of peace and joy for all of Israel and for the whole world. Through him, Abraham's seed would bless all nations as the Lord God promised. The prophet foretold that this would be the sign of his coming. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Behold, a virgin shall conceive
carries good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, say unto the cities of Judah, A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but the righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will say, slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. This is a reading from the book of Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, 
because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Here ended the reading of the Lord. In the darkest of times, in the most remote of places, a child was born to a virgin, as had been foretold by the prophet Isaiah. And behold, the light of the world had come into the world, and the darkness could never thereafter extinguish it. It shone in Bethlehem on the first Christmas night, and it shines in our world still, and in our lives, and in our hearts.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. Oh, unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Child is born. 
Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his A child is born unto us. 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 A son is given unto us. A son is given, and the government shall be shall be upon his shoulder. His coming was not announced to kings in their palaces, nor was he born among the world's great and powerful. He was born in a manger bed to poor parents. Only to shepherds tending their flocks was the long-awaited news proclaimed. This day is born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The message to those shepherds echoes through the centuries to us. We too have good news of great joy. We too have a Savior who is Christ the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And this is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Creator God, open our hearts and open our eyes and open our ears to the, to the message that you send us constantly. Open our ears to the singing of angels. Open our eyes to the, your signs in the sky. Open our hearts to the spirit that your son Jesus has given us that calls us always more deeply into your love. We ask this in his name. He is Lord with you. He is king forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Amen. One of the things I love about Christmas time the most, and you'll think it's sort of silly, I love those Hallmark Christmas movies. And what I love about the whole series is called The Miracles of Christmas. And what I love about those movies that, is that every one of them is a story of hope and love and possibility and transformation. In every one of those movies, someone discovers or rediscovers love. Someone finds a, a new path to happiness or rediscovers an old one and has the courage to travel it finally. And every one of those movies ends happily with people discovering their best selves and beginning to live in great joy. Now, those, those movies have very improbable plots, very predictable, but very improbable. But what I love about them is that I believe that God does improbable things all the time. And we just have to watch and see it. For example, Connie. Connie uh, is a single mom. She's the mother of two kids, two teenagers. And she's struggling to make ends meet. She lives in the Los Angeles area. She, she, she has two jobs. She's going to school to, to better herself. And she, Chris, as Christmas time approached a couple of years ago, she didn't know how she was gonna manage her family because she didn't have all that much. And then one day close to Christmas, she got home from work and what was on the front porch of her home but a great big basket full of Christmas goodies, all sorts of foods and delicacies, enough to, 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 make, to ensure that she and her kids would have just a wonderful Christmas meal. But as Connie looked at her, at her basket, she had a little guilt too, because she knew other people who needed that basket more than she did. Her grandma and grandpa, for example, were living on their social security income, and it wasn't that much. And they were pretty far from the next check. And so she packed the, ba the basket in a car and drove it over to her grandma and grandpa's house, and they were absolutely thrilled to get it. They told her, they, they, they said, you know, Without this, we wouldn't have had much of a dinner on Christmas. Now we're going to have a wonderful one. But they said, how about you? Are you going to be OK? And she blew that off. She said, oh, sure, we'll manage. And off she went back home, not with her basket full of goodies for her own meal, but with a heart full of love for having been able to help grandma and grandpa have a better Christmas than they otherwise would have. That's a miracle of Christmas, and that's a real one. But it's sort of improbable, too. But th that happens all the time around this time of year because people start doing improbable things. Beautiful things, but improbable things. I mean, <clears throat> for, for most of the year, we're all pretty selfish. We're thinking about what we want and what we can get for ourselves. And then at Christmas, we begin to think about the other people in our lives that we might be able to bless. We think about our moms, our dads, our kids. We, we think about people in our neighborhood who maybe need a little bit more uh, than they have, and, and maybe we can help them. So, so the Christmas miracles are the miracles of the people who put baskets of goodies on the, uh, 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 on the porch of women like Connie in Los Angeles who are in need. It was an anonymous gift, but it was a beautiful gift. And it made a huge difference to Connie and to her grandparents. 
this improbable behavior all flows from one of the most improbable gifts that was ever given in the entire history of creation. The gift of God's Son, born incarnate of Mary in Bethlehem. The story makes no sense. I mean, a, a, a child is born in Bethlehem to a, to a young couple that's struggling on a trip that has no place to stay and, and, and that has to, has, to, has to take up a shelter in a barn where when their baby is born, it's laid in a manger, in a place where cows eat. And the baby is God. The baby is the son of God in the flesh. That's the way it happens? Really? There are signs in the stars, but only three foreigners saw the sign and took any notice of it at all. Only they followed a star that brought them to Bethlehem to honor the king that was born, the king of the Jews. There were angels singing in the hills, but only the shepherds heard the song. Poor people out taking care of their flocks, doing a thankless, unpleasant job on a cold night in the winter. They heard the angels because they were listening. And they heard the song of God's movement among his creation, that God was doing something strange but powerful. Didn't make sense. If you were God, wouldn't you have done it somewhat differently? Wouldn't you have made more of a splash? The child grows up, lives a very short life, and he begins to teach because he's a prophet. In fact, he's more than a prophet. He, he teaches people that God loves them. He teaches especially the people who felt unloved and unwelcomed by the big shots in society. He, he teaches the tax collectors that there's hope for them, even though their neighbors despise them. He, he, he reached out to sinners and told them that God forgives them and loves them. Just, just change, just, just come back, just turn back to God and he will embrace you because he's never turned from you. Jesus reached out to, to foreigners, to strangers, to folks who were on the fringe of society and he gave them hope. And to the sick and the suffering and the grieving, he brought healing and new life. You'd think that somebody like that would be welcomed with a brass band in his society, but the people who had the power were threatened by Jesus. And so even though he had a small following and he had some friends who followed him carefully and devotedly, he was arrested and those friends fled. They were fair-weather friends indeed. And he was, in short order, tried, convicted, condemned, and executed naked and alone between two thieves, forgotten by all but a few women who stood by the cross to grieve. If that's all there was to this extraordinary and improbable story, about a king who was born in Bethlehem and lived a short life before his execution, we would not be here telling it because Jesus and Mary and the angels and the shepherds and the wise men, they would be forgotten. They would be forgotten. We are here because the Lord of life could not be killed. We're here because the light that shone in the darkness 
could not be extinguished. Darkness will never overcome light. And Jesus is and remains the light of the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, are you. And so Jesus rose and he came back to his fair weather friends and told them all was forgiven and they should love one another and they should forgive each other from the heart and they should go to the ends of the earth telling people how much God loves them and especially they should tell the people who are broken and alone and frightened. The people who feel that there is no one who cares about them. How could anyone love them? And we tell them that good news, not only with our words, but with our actions. What kind of actions? You figure it out. We all have different people that we can bless. Someone put a basket on Connie's front porch. That person was sharing the light of Christmas with her. We become each other's Christmas miracles. So the miracles are all around us. We are the miracles for some, but we're asked to look for the other ones. But like the star, it can only be seen if somebody's looking for it. Like the song of the angels, it can only be heard if we are listening to it. God winks at us all the time. God sends us messages that show us the path to new joy. He creates opportunities for us that we never thought would exist. He opens roads for us that we thought were blocked or closed off completely. He brings people into our lives or back into our lives. And he says to us, here's the path for joy. Use your heart and follow it. Follow the path that I am giving you. You don't think you have courage? Well, let me tell you this. The power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the, the glory of the Most High will overshadow you. And you will give birth in your life, as certainly as Mary did to the Son of God, because you too are sons and daughters of God. And so the miracles of Christmas are miracles of new life. They're miracles of people transformed and changed. They're miracles of people that thought they were stuck in their past and discover that there are new possibilities, that there are new opportunities, that there are new options. And all they need to do is have the courage to follow them. There are folks that think that, that, that they're trapped by their compulsions and, and, and their addictions. And, and, and Jesus says to them through his, through his people, he says, no, you're never trapped by anything. I've come to give you life and freedom. And so if you recognize me, if you recognize the power that I have, you will never, ever be stuck. The miracles of Christmas are miracles of families reunited, of, of, of families finding the, themselves together after years of estrangement because it's Christmas time and Christmas brings them together. The miracles of Christmas are miracles of, of old friends reunited, old loves remembered and, and, and followed, old passions that, that we thought were long dead that are now, again, a part of our lives. That is not accidental. That is by the grace of God. And, and sometimes this stuff is so new and so, so unexpected 
And that's okay because God is a God of creation. He is a God of novelty and newness and new life. We are never stuck by our past. The past is where God was. The future is where God will be. And now, now is where God is. So be watching for the basket on your porch as Connie found that basket on hers. Now, when she drove back from her grandparents' house, she was thinking she had done a good thing and her heart was full of love, but she still didn't know how she was going to feed her family on Christmas or her two kids until she pulled into her driveway and on her porch she found another basket just as wonderful as the first. She has no idea where that basket came from to this day. But I know where it came from. It came from a miraculous gift of God's love made possible by the love of someone like you or like me who was inspired to put that basket on a porch not once but twice. So my brothers and sisters, go out and be Christmas miracles. Go out and watch for your own Christmas miracles. Go out and follow where God's leading you and go out and be a gift of life to others because that is the true meaning of Christmas. Amen.
Every year, one of the most important collections of our year is the Christmas collection because people, uh, a lot of people are here who we don't see for the rest of the year. And also um, the, the uh, folks who are here are often very generous. This year, we don't have that gathering of people here, but we do have our online service. So at this point in the service, I would ask you to take a moment to be generous. Take a moment to write a check or, or give online or do something uh, to support this church because we rely on your support so that we can support the people we help. And we help a lot of folks. So please uh, take a moment to give generously. And uh, after, after a, a brief moment's pause, I will dedicate whatever gifts you are sending uh, to us or to others uh, who, who are in need of your help. Gracious God, you are the giver of every good gift. In this Christmas celebration, we celebrate the greatest gift you have given uh, to humanity, to, to the world, to your creation, the gift of your son, the gift of your presence in human form, uh, the gift of, of life that knows no end in him. And so as we celebrate your tremendous generosity to us, accept the gifts that we offer to you. They are really what you have given to us, but we consecrate it back to you. And we ask you to make these gifts in the hands of your church, something beautiful for you and, and, and help us through these gifts to build the kingdom and to help the ones who need help the most, the vulnerable, the poor, the weak, the old. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. He is the one who calls us to be generous. He is the one who has given his life for us in his own generosity. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Amen. Now, please join in praying the prayer of the disciple that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And we can all say, Amen. Now please bow down your heads to pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and have mercy on you. May the Lord show you kindness and give you peace. May the Lord bless each one of us, the Lord who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And we can all say amen. And now our Christmas celebration is over. Go in peace to enjoy the day. Go in peace to enjoy Christmas. Go in peace to be with your families and your friends. And if you're not able to gather with family and friends, go in peace knowing the love that surrounds you in your world. Go in peace knowing that you're loved here in this church if you're a part of our congregation or if you're a part of the extended family of folks who worship with us. Go in peace knowing that there are people who care about you. And then go in peace and show the care you have for others. Go in peace and see who you can enrich through the gift of your love. Go in peace and think of the neighbors you want to bless or the relatives you haven't spoken to or the folks who need to hear your voice and maybe they need to also hear your, 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 your words of forgiveness. Whoever it is, you will know it. Go in peace to bring the peace of God, of Christ, 
bring the peace that the angels proclaimed on the first Christmas night when they stirred the hearts of shepherds and encouraged them to go to Bethlehem to find the king, finally, worth worshiping. Amen. Ooh.